Hi guys, Great Modeling again, uh, here for the April update. Um, what I've been up, up to since last time we spoke? Uh, well, not that much really. Um, as a lot of you saw, I completed the Jag Panther. I put the, the photo build up for that. Uh, that was a really nice build, turned out really well. Um, I also finished the um, Luftwaffe instructor pilot figure. That's all done, uh, looking really nice. And I've also completed two other, well, three other figures since then. Um, once I've finished doing this introduction thing, I'll go grab them and show you in the next part before I do um, a review. Um, I'll pick another kit at random from my stash do a review for you. Um, I haven't had time this month really to do any footage for my kind of step by step video build. Um, I am part of the um, air cadets or air training call and every year we have a a, um, a big competition in June which is part of our wing. Um, you've got squadrons, which there's 29 squadrons in our wing so, for for instance, I'm in the best picture in Cambridge a wing. I'm part of 511 Ramsey Squadron, um, and the wing go is part of um, the six wings in a region. A region, the six regions in the whole corps, and they spread all over the country. But I'm in Beds and Cams, and every June, Beds and Cams wing have a wing field day uh, where we test um, each other on different skills like drill aircraft recognition, things like that, and one of them is um, a modelling competition. And I've entered that now for the last four years, and I've won it for the last two. last two consecutive years I've been I've come first in classes six and seven, which are the, uh, the individual model and the diorama class, which go forward to the regional field day, which happens in September. Now, someone, some kind person at um, regional headquarters for the Air Cadets, they choose a model for us to build for the Wingfield Day and then to go represent at Wing, or at Regional, sorry. And this year, they've picked an awful kit. I mean, they have done some, not, no, they've done some pretty bad ones over the past. I mean, Last year was the MPM Gloucester Meteor Mark 8. Uh, that was quite bad. Fits were not good at all. Year before that, the Airfix 148 uh, Spitfire uh, Mark 9. It's not the best of kits. I mean, it's not it's better than some, but it's not still not that brilliant. And the first year that I did it, it was the Revel. Um, Mark IV Mosquito, the bomber version. That wasn't too bad, but me, I was quite um, unexperienced then, and I made a complete hash of it. But this year, they've um, made a really bad choice in my decision. There were a lot better kits they could have chosen. And this year, they have chosen not only this is for both for both classes. This year, normally it's two different uh, kits. But this year for both classes, they've chosen this, which is the Airfix 172nd scale D Havilland Chipmunk. Now, the problem with this kit really is age. 1969 is what's moulded inside the wings. Uh, it has it poses all of Airfix's early kits as normal. Uh, raised rivets, raised panel lines, bad fit, um, lack de lack of detail everywhere. It's really an awful choice. I mean, they could have chosen the Nat, the um, F-22 Spitfire, even the 48 Spitfire, the PR-19. But no, chose this. So can't have to grin and bear it, but what I'm doing uh, for the diorama, I'm, um, we've been set a um, a theme 
of air experience flying. As part of the cadets we do um, air experience flying. Uh, today we use the Grob Tutor um, but when the air experience flights first began back in the 50s started off on the chipmunk, moved over to the bulldog during the kind of late 80s, early 90s and then transferred over to the Grob Tutor but there, so yeah, so AEF for this, I've got some um, uh, aftermarket decals for both, so here they are, but for this one, which is the diorama kit, which I haven't started yet, I'm doing um, number six air experience flight uh, at Royal Air Force Abingdon, uh, 1984. And for the individual class, which is I've already started, it's in one of these little trays here. I'm doing a, an aircraft from the uh, Cambridge University Air Squadron. Um, but what I'm trying to do, which I've started to, is if the camera pick it up. Stop that! I've got a leak in my compressor. This cuts in whenever it likes to. But I'm starting to put in some of the ribbon detail in the mid. It doesn't. The cop inside of that doesn't look pretty at the moment, but I'm gonna start to put in some of that ribbing detail. I'm gonna try and add a bit more into that. Uh, I'm gonna also have a go at flat form in the canopy. Oh dear! And on this one, cut open the cow. So, one, what I've done is I've started to make. The the Havilland uh, Gypsy Major engine, so four cylinders, quite small. This is actually too big; doesn't actually fit at the moment. That's just the um, piece of plastic that holds the propeller on that comes out of the kit. Just using that for the moment. If I can, I'm going to try, hence try, try and get hold of the. Uh, I've had a look online. Apparently, Aero Club, which is a company that doesn't really is, yeah, I think it has. Yeah, I think its main kind of person died, I think, and um, it kind of stopped production. But they do a white metal Gypsy Major engine, and they also do a white metal uh, cowl on the front, like this bit, the front cowl and the propeller set. Now, the only place I could find it was in the States and you know, it was they're both both sets were six dollars each so that what twelve dollars kind of double that so it's twenty quids worth of stuff but well twenty quid it's but it's post postage, I don't know if, and it also depends if they got it in stock or not. But um I'm planning on sanding all these raised rivets off here. Uh, I've got the um, trumpeter um, riveting tool. I'm going to try and rivet some of them, put some of the rivets back in, and describe some of the panel lines. Taking the flaps off, try and drop the flaps. But at the moment, I've kind of, it's going. Progress is slow, so that's all we're going to. Progress is slow. So really, I've got what? What's the date now? Twenty second. May, no not May, April and I've got about just over two months to do two kits that would be fun um, but I've got a cunning idea with the um, for the diorama for, with, and I have a cadet walking out to the aircraft ready to get in and go flying so what I've got is I've gotten this which is the uh, Airfix's RAF personnel from World War 2 Hence, actually, right in the front, this running guy here, I'm going to have him uh, as my cadet or whatever, and, and I'm going to cut his head off. And I'm going to replace his head with a, a a more modern head with a modern, well, a, a fairly modern flying helmet. And it looks like, because obviously you still use normal parachutes, um, as in conventional parachutes with a rip cord in these aircraft, it's not no ejector seats, no detonation cord, nothing like that. So I think that's the only way I'm gonna get round it. So I'll have the pilot in in the aircraft, um and that cadet and possibly an NCO or someone 
or a I don't know somebody trying to take him out there. But yeah, that's really um, my next kind of main project. I have got a couple of other things on the go, which I'll show you in just two seconds. The first thing for another Flory model um, SIG this time is this, which is this very nice black, which is primed black, ready for a natural metal finish. It's the Tamiya P51 Mustang in 148. Really, really nice kit. Fell together, no problem. Uh, real quick build. Doing it completely out of the box. It's got the kit pilot in it as well. Uh, it's all masked up. Just ready, ready. I'm going to use uh, Model Masters um, buffball uh, metalizers. The only one I was missing, which was this one, the aluminium, the aluminium plate, which was the only one that was missing when I did the um, uh, the walk around uh, video. That was the only one of the range that was missing, so about 20, about 15, 20 psi thin coats, and then give it a, a light buff over the top. And then I've got the, I've got some Model Master um, gloss, oops, see Daisy, gloss enamel, uh, yeah, gloss lacquer uh, coat to protect this stuff. I've also got some metalizer sealer up there, but I don't know if that'll really work. But, the, um, what I did uh, win, it was really a win, is disguised in this envelope. It's from the nice uh, people at the Airfix Around the World, um, or the Airfix Around the World. So if you haven't heard of this, it's the um, Airfix Lightning Kit in 148, which is, actually, which is traveling around the world. It's being built by modelers around the world in aid for help for heroes. And here's the uh, sign. So FX around the world, and they have a prize draw, and I have won. Luckily enough, it's first joined the um, the page the other week. Saw that they're giving a prize away. Joined it. Didn't think anything else about it. Got a message through saying you've won. So I won three. Aftermarket de decal sheets from Kit World or Kits World. Um, the first one, which I probably will never use, unfortunately, because I don't have the space anymore. It's a aftermarket decal sheet for the HK models, uh, 132nd B25. Really nice decals. All of them are really nice decals. But that's in 132nd. So that was the first sheet I won. Second sheet is a 148 set. For 109s and um, 190s, so we've got Battle of Britain stuff, we've got Galans uh, aircraft, we've got um, the 190s with the with the green hearts. Again, really nice sheet, really really nice. And then one that I probably will use quite a lot is a sheet of swastikas. Again, all in register. We've got. I mean, it is not, I mean, they go. They're really only designed for three, four different aircraft, which are the 109, the 190, uh, the Stuka, and the 262. But you can, you know, obviously, you can vary them. They will fit other things as well. So thank you to um, Airfix around the world for that. So if you haven't um, uh, heard of them, or please go and show that your support. They're on Facebook, uh, they're on quite a lot of the forums and things around the on the end on the internet. Go sign up, FX around the world. Thank you again. So that's those. And the other thing I'm working on at the moment, again for the Florian for the Florian models um, Korean War uh, group build. I'm working on this, which is a. It's, it says on the box Warrior, Warrior Scale Models. Um, they're uh, Korean War uh, BAR Gunner. So that's him. It comes with his nice display base, which I've done as the boxes in the winter. 
so he's got all of his uh, his equipment, his uh, entrenching tool, uh, ammunition pouches, helmet, things like that. And he sits very nicely up in the trench. If I just grab the, um, also got the BAR, which is this. Um, it's kind of like a heavy, almost like a heavy machine, almost I think. But used during Second World War, and it's there. Pretty much all I've got to do is add two little straps to his helmet and fix the BAR gun and him to the base and he's done. I'm slightly ahead, if you're watching and you're a member of Prory Models and if you follow my build, I'm slightly ahead uh, here than I am on the forum because I just haven't had a chance to upload the photographs. Um, but yeah, he's a really nice figure. I did have a little bit of a fit issue joining the top and bottom half but filled that with a bit of super glue, give it a good sand used some needle files to uh, put the um, folds and things back in just go at it with a, um, a, c a rounded edge um, needle file got yourself uh, folds the base, that so the joins around there were a bit fiffy so just you know, a bit of filler and uh, stuff but give it a I actually, I didn't actually paint it with any. I give it a coat, first coat of the that um, Vallejo uh, or Vallejo, uh, Vallejo um, dark earth paste. Just give it a really thin uh, coat of that, just to re uh, retain the detail. Did a little bit of AK Interactive's um, dark earth pigment. And a little, even a little bit of their wet effect, um, kind of wash, or an enamel gloss varnish. And then I, I mixed um, plaster of Paris with Vallejo's um, foam and snow stuff, which is pretty much just white acrylic paint almost, just slightly thicker. And I just mixed that up into a consistency with to make a snow. And I just dabbed it round, you know, kind of where it would fall down. Put some on his boots. I think it turned out really well. It's permanent. It's not like talcum powder or whatever. You use a PVA glue, it doesn't come off. It turned out really well. So that's him. So, um, that's really all I've got to talk about for this present second. But a couple of shout no, a couple of shout outs. Uh, Model Pro 72, Lenny. Uh, hi. Thanks for your, your kind comments, mate. Um, the Jaguar. Good build, mate. Um, I'm even thinking about getting one myself. Uh, don't worry about the canopy. We've all done it. We've all sat on, stood on, lost bits. You, you were lucky, yeah. You, could, you had the piece of paper still. You could go and get spare bits or scavenge them off your mates and things like that. But yeah, really, really impressive build, mate. Um, basic modelling. Nice to see you. Um, We'll actually see more of you rather than just the photographs and words it's nice to hear from you Rob um, again really good builds mate um, I, you were the first person I subscribed to when I was when I first started on YouTube uh, really really good builds mate um, keep up the good work hope that Lancaster's coming on nicely um, Kalido1 hi mate um, really again your video builds and your your A10 was fantastic. Uh, your advice, your videos are just amazing, mate. Just keep up the good work. Um, hope all the preparations for the baby are all coming on really nicely. So yeah, uh, look forward to seeing more of you again uh, fairly soon, hopefully. Uh, who else have I got? Uh, I've had some new subscribers off the top of my head. Atomic Dog. 32, thank you for subscribing. Um, oh, I can't remember them off the top of my head now. Is my computer working? No, it's gone off. Um, but thank you to everybody who subscribed over the last kind of two or three months. Um, it really boosts my confidence when you do, uh, when I get more subscribers. So, and my email box has been pinging all the time with comments and feedback and subscribers and stuff over the last few weeks so really thank you very much um, making models again Gary fantastic work mate cannot describe you you're an inspiration to everybody 
your Angel Interceptor is a fabulous work of art. Um, even doing your little stuff, like your your two little MiG 21s, fantastic. Uh, hope to see some more of the Hellcat, 48 Hellcat, soon. Uh, so yeah, good job, mate. Right, if I've forgotten anybody else, I'm really really sorry, but I can just can't remember them off the top of my head. I haven't got my iPod out here, so I can't really look, and my computer just died. So, but anyway, um. I'm going to stop the camera now, I'm going to go and get the bits and pieces that i finished off. I will leave the Jag Panther because you've already seen that, but I'll go and get the figures that i finished, which I'm quite happy with, so I'll see you in a second. Hi, I'm back. Um, so, first up, as you saw uh, the last time, I've got my Ufafa instructor pilot. Uh, he turned out really well, I was really happy with the result. Um, I used some of that static grass again on the base. Um, turned out really nice. Um, I even braved it and put on the randalls and stuff and the crosses on the Spitfire and the uh, uh, 190. And he just turned out, I think, I don't know how old Reheat is, but if you can find Reheat stuff, it's pretty good, uh, especially the figures. Nice fit, uh, nice detail, uh, really nice kit. So, sorry I recommend that. I think Hamlet's still have a couple of these left, which I think is where my, I think is where I got it from. I think they still got it left. If you, uh, I think it was about twenty quid. Twenty quid. I don't think it was too bad. Twenty twenty five pounds for that. Um, it's on par with um, some of the MIG stuff which I've been working on and some of the. Um, Belindrin stuff which I've got up there as well so go get yourself one of them really nice kit that's the first one second one up is MIG Productions um, T uh, yeah T55 um, commander figure now he's an ugly looking person he is a real ugly 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 person but he was a really nice figure to build. It's nice doing busts rather than doing full figures. Don't have to worry about, uh, well, you don't have to worry too much about seam lines. It's really you can just bung it together and paint it. But this came with uh, the full turret hatch with all the detail inside, with the periscopes and the handles and stuff. And it was this was the first figure I used. Um, these Chamia. Uh, weather insets. Now these are weather insets for figures, so I use so it's all different types of flesh tones. And it's a really easy way. So if you don't want to use um really kind of the only thing I used for this one and for some of the other ones was these. I used um just grab it a second. I used uh, the we are. Right, so I used normal, neat Tamiya X15 Tamiya X15 flat flesh as a base and then in here which is another Tamiya flat flesh bottle I've just uh, taken that mix thinned it 50-50 probably a bit more added a, about 3 or 4 drops of white and given it a good mix and that I've just using it thin with a brush just go around and I'll just use on kind of the highlights that ran the uh, cheekbones, the edge, tips of the nose, uh, chin and things like that. So that's kind of my base coat highlight, that's all I do, those two. Then I give the whole thing, uh, some in some areas more than others, but I give the whole thing a wash of uh, Vallejo's uh, uh, Flesh Tone Wash, which is this kind of reddy colour uh, wash which goes really well, looks really good in ears, uh, forms nice shadows and stuff. Let that dry. It goes the whole uh, figure goes a bit red and a bit dark. But uh, you can come along again with some of this light stuff if you want to pick out some more stuff again. Or what I was doing was using these Tamiya weather insets and just going along picking out the nose, the cheekbones where he would have been red in the face, on the um, on the cheeks and things. I uh, just also um, take a bit of flat flesh and 
hull red, XF9 hull red, Ooh, sorry, the power cut, hull red, and mix it up and make these clips. So that's him. Now I'm just going to quickly go and see what's happened with the electricity. It's back in a second. Oh, yeah, I'm back. Uh, just a, a fuse had tripped, so I just tripped it back off. But anyway. Anyway, so, sorry, I lost where I was there. So, yeah. Just used his Tamiya Wesleyan sets on his face and turned out a treat. So, yeah. So, the next one, well, it's two figures really. I did the this one first in the uh, field grey. This is, again, MIG Productions. Two pieces to this kit. Oh, no, three pieces. Uh, get his head and his torso come with one. His hat comes as a separate and his iron cross down there comes as a separate um, so I have so I've done this one as kind of like the f in the field grey with a bit leathered down, a bit older a bit warm material and I've done this one in the SS Black with the swastika armband which I haven't done a full swastika but um he turned out really nice. Um, face on this one, I'm really proud of. Oh, I didn't talk about eyes. I, I'll go back to eyes in a second. But eyes, um, base coat, uh, the rim. Oh, I'll just sort of reach down a bit. Probably going to go funny now. Right. Um, so yeah, uh, did the um, or did the base of black to do the edges. Then went along with uh, a blue to do obviously the the eye colour, and then touched a dot of black in the middle for the iris. Did I do white slashes in each of these eyes? No, I did two. Just a, literally a pinprick of white, just to show the light. Turned out really well. Um, the black or the black one. Um, I used did quite a lot of uh, dulling down, so I think this one looks almost like an older general. This one looks like a young recruit almost to me. So he had a lot of highlights and low lights and stuff. This he just he literally just had the base coat. I didn't even bother with the with the highlight colour. I just went straight in with a Tamiya weathering set and that was done. So I was doing that one in a bit of a rush, but and then I just stuck it on a block, painted it black, cut this piece out of the kit. And cop um, printed that off the internet. Stuck it on two pe old paintbrush, two old paintbrush ends. Done. Nice display stand. Similar thing with the uh, eyes on him. So that is really it for what I've been up to. Now um, I'm going to pick a kit and I'm going to do a review for you. So I'll be back in just a second. So. The reviews. Um, so first up, we're going to do two. First up, we've got the uh, this, which is the Mini Craft uh, 148 scale US Marine Corps uh, F4U-5N Corsair, uh, the Korean War Night Fighter. Um, I'm planning on doing this after I've done all Wingfield Day stuff. Um, I'm going to enter this in with the figure for the Korean War group build at Florida Models, so let's have a look in the kit. So come back to I'll come back to instructions and stuff in a second. First time I've looked in this kit, normally I have a look at them first, but this time it would be a completely blind uh, review. So Come on. Yeah. Right. First up, fuselage halves. Now the recessed panel lining. There is recessed panel lining. However, it's quite. F um, it's not crisp. It's quite very, very shallow. You're going to have to go over this with a with a uh, a rescriber. Because you can, it's, it's almost like it's got dents in it. It's not really, um, it's not really recessed panel lines. It's just kind of um, 
scratches or, or deep scratches. I mean, you, the camera probably would never pick it out. I really need a better camera, but you can just about see where they are. But they are normally if when you run it out, when you run over a you run over a panel line, you can actually hear it kind of click. This it's kind of a it's almost smooth. So, but yeah, a bit disappointing for its cost, but never mind. Um, but yeah, that's the fuselage. There's no interior detail at all, so I suppose the cockpit will be a one hole piece. I hope so, anyway. Yeah, the the um, wings are a similar picture. No wing fold. No wing. Uh, so these are the two top wings. No wing fold. You're definitely going to have to go over these. Because they're just so bad. Some nasty ejector bin marks on the inside, but hey ho, what can you do? Um, the so two bags. Next bag, or the, the last bag. Um, now, ooh, it's not. The engine's not too bad actually. Um show the engine you obviously got two parts. Come on. Anyway. Engine the engine's quite nice. Um I'm not sure if the cowlings are supposed to be dented like that, but they're quite dented up. And they're quite thick. Jesus, they are thick. Oh no, maybe just just two backs. But um got one piece um tail wheel and arrestor hook. Again, all the panel lines. I mean it looks to me on these rear stabilizers like almost like the the kit is kind of not quite set in and it's, uh, it's come out the mould. These rear stabilizers, I mean they are bumpy like a bumpy road. They rise and they fall. You can see the squiggles. If you kind of hold up to the light almost, you can just see it's all rough and horrible and yuck. Never mind. Power lines on the bottom are a little bit better, but you got one piece, don't have to worry about joins and stuff. So I don't know. This kit's twenty-five pounds. You think for twenty-five pounds you'd expect a bit more? You've got bulged tyre, well, you've got flattened off tyres, weighted on weighted on tyres. Now, looking online before I bought this, um, someone said that the kit propeller is the wrong shape. Now I don't know anything about Corsairs really. I just think you know. All the instrument detail is all decals. I mean, there is a huge ejector bin mark on the back of it, and all the rest of it's flat. So I think you're gonna. There's no photo etch set specifically for this, but I think you might be able to get away with a Hasegawa one. Just substitute it in. I think is what I might do. But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's not. It's not fantastic. It's all good. It's not brilliant. Canopy. It just get it out of the bag. Let's have a look how clear it is. Let's try and find something fairly good with this kit. Come on, right? It's not very clear at all, really. Um, the framing works not very crisp either. There's a massive scratch in one of the, in this side of the canopy. Um, yeah, I'm not really impressed with this kit at all. That canopy's not very good at all. Now, in decals, the decals look pretty good. I'm not going to lie, the decals look pretty good. You've got stenciling detail, you've got two different marks, and you've got um, the instrument detail and stuff as well. Printed by Cartograph, so graph decals are pretty good, so they're not too bad. There's that's a step up. This one, uh, so look at the instructions. 
quite simple instructions really quite simple instructions give you um, they're pretty clear I mean they're clearer than some kits like Revel and stuff they're pretty terrible but instructions in there but and then you've got two marking options so you've got one that's in the black the night fighter and you've got one that's in the midnight blue so overall that kit is the min that is the mini craft 148 um, Corsair would I buy one? Would or would I recommend you to go and buy one? If it was a bit cheaper, I would say yes, because it's you know it's a. Well, if you're gonna go, if you want, if you tick, if you particularly want a 5N, you've got a choice between this and the Hasegawa one. Now, I believe the Hasegawa one is quite expensive, so if you wanted to go for a 5N, if you wouldn't mind putting in a bit of work, then yeah, you could go and get one of these. But if you don't want to faff around, I suggest you're going to get the Hasegawa one personally. So that's that one. Now this one. This, this one is the first of Edward's uh, releases of the Academy P38J with their update set. Now this is over Europe. They've now done over the Pacific and they've done one other one. I think there's three flavours of this kit. Now, as I just said, uh, the actual plastic itself is the Academy kit. Uh, Edward have a, a habit recently of doing um, Academy plastic with their own bits and pieces. So we'll quickly, so there is lots of extra bits and pieces. So if I just get the, put the box over here, we'll start with the kit. So. The Academy plastic on its own is really very nice. It's got nicely engraved panel lines. Let's try and get in there, have a look. Nicely engraved panel lines. They look a bit better than they do on the camera because the camera's awful. Uh, you have got wiring detail and stuff in the wheel wells and bits and pieces. The nice, nice raised rivets with recessed panel lines. So there are a couple of areas where they dodge off and bits and pieces some worse than others but um, you are probably going to have you know you might want to run around a little bit with a pea cutter but you know you're probably going to get a bit of dust in it anyway now the kit cockpit itself it's pretty good for injection molded uh, there are a couple of ejecting in lots you, but you've got um, a good cockpit set good cockpit I think for plastic but you don't need to worry about plastic in this bit because you've got a resin one which we'll have a look at in a second individual uh, prop blades uh, rockets uh, wheels with separate hubs makes easier painting that's pretty good uh, this is the cover for the gun I don't think you actually get four guns in this but there's the little cover uh, again recessed panel lined raised rivets lots of little sprues uh, got the engine fronts and the gun mount as well as the air intakes really really nice uh, nothing wrong so far no flash no miss moulds no nothing like that now moving over you've got two types of um, actually coming back you've got two types of uh, front gun, I suppose that'd be the different versions. But you've got bombs uh, with separate fins, uh, pylons, uh, control yoke, machine guns. They look like parts of the rear or the the main wheel wells. You've even got texture on the um, the instrument hub shroud, which is really nice. You've got set of vinyl tyres which is quite nice they're quite uh, they've got some nice um, they've got a big seam running around the middle of them but um, they've got some nice tread detail in there moving over again these are two duplicates so for the two tail booms again really nice raised rivets recessed power lines no flash really 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 nice really liking this kit 
and then just to finish off you've got these last two bits so you've got the superchargers for the engines and you've got rocket pods air intakes and finally uh, tanks uh, the horizontal stabiliser at the back and the gear doors and bits and pieces so that's all the plastic on it we not got the canopy I won't grab I won't grab this one out um, but you've got um, the rear yes yeah, you've got the rear part uh, the front shroud and the main canopy can be uh, viewed open so I think you have to build it closed you've got three bits which you build up closed that makes sense to anybody follow up set you've got Carlos photo etch for the instrument panel and the harnesses and the armour plate and placards and such and such so that's them quite nice in there and on the back you've got bits for what look like the gear doors the grills um, bits and pieces flaps I think no, they're not flaps, what I was just talking about. But anyway, nice bit of photo etch there. And the, the pièce de résistance, as the French would say. Sorry for anybody who's French. Um, you have got a hell of a lot of uh, Edouard Brazin uh, stuff. So we'll start with these, which are the wheels. Start with the wheels. These are far, far, far superior to the um, kit ones. Beautiful tread. Beautiful inside. Uh, casting blocks are very thin, very fine. They're going to be easy to remove. You've got separate hub caps. These are little gems by the looks of it. So, obviously you've got your two main wheels and you've got your, um, your nose wheel. Tricycle undercarriage on this. Just pop that back over there for a second. Um, this bag, you've got two resin superchargers for the engines. They don't have to use plastic ones. Resin uh, air intakes, and they're the bigger. Oh, I'll get them out of the bag. What's the point? Whoops. These bigger air intakes for the sides on the booms. So that's. Oh, that. Next up is the cockpit. So you've got um, really nice. You've got hoses. You've got everything in there. I'm going to try and get the camera to lock in there because that is beautiful detail. Come on, camera. God's sake. Please, camera. Oh, this is not legit. But you have got fabulous uh, detail everywhere on this cockpit. Uh, fantastic detail on the little centre shroud, which has all of the start switches, etc., on there. Nice uh, seat, and with the radio bits at the back behind the cockpit or behind the pilot's head. Oops, dropping bits everywhere. Come back to that in a second. But we've got more bits of the cockpit so you hear it I'm not gonna run out of time so um, you've got side walls uh, resin instrument panel um, resin bits of I think it's for the door that drops down I think I think it's the door I don't know and then you've got some little bits for rudder pedals and gun sight and bits and pieces like that so oh yeah quickly quick, quickly the real thing behind this, you've got this beautiful, now I mean some of these are beautiful, uh, deck or sheet, uh, real nice colours, everything's in register, printed by cartographed again, um, I think this kit was to celebrate all of the schemes that we used over um, Europe, it's really nice there, and you've also got yourself a set of masks there as well. Last thing up, the instructions. Anyone who's built an Edouard kit before, really clear, uh, tell you exactly where to put all the, the resin parts, where to remove bits, 
and replace them with photo etch or whatever um, and then of course you've got all of these beautiful schemes you've got uh, there's a couple of olive drab ones but a lot of them are um, the uh, natural metal finish but stencil detail on the back as well really good kit thoroughly recommend it I think it's about £45 and I think that's £45 for all the flavours so you can choose ones from the Pacific and for Europe as well so that's it I'm going to call it a day it's been well I don't know how long I've been I've been yapping on for ages but um, thank you for tuning in uh, please stay tuned for uh, more updates and hopefully in this past, um, some sort of step by step video build um, yeah thank you for tuning in stay tuned this has been great modelling and I shall see you later